There is no reconciliation without confrontation. This is a thought that uh, came into my mind while I was at work today. Um, I'm a hand packer uh, in a food manufacturing setting. I'm a factory worker, um, the lowest uh, level in the building. And I had this thought come up. I was thinking about my past and uh, my current readings and the idea that reconciliation is possible only after confrontation between that which needs to be reconciled. That is, I mean, in a sense, it you could understand it in terms of exposure therapy. You could understand it in terms of facing your fears. You can understand it in terms of looking at yourself in the mirror. But confrontation doesn't have to be adversarial. Confrontation can be fun. It can be a game. It can even be a dance. Uh, back and forth where there's uh, fluidity to it. You know, it doesn't have to be this rigid, brittle structure, this hardened, uh, linear uh, concept. No, it, it, it can be something much lighter, brighter, a creative story. And what I'm trying to do in my own life and what I hope to share with you in this short video is simply an encouragement that it takes quite a lot of energy and, and time to get to a place where we can build our capacity to be able to handle the questions that life asks of us and any small amount of measuring up to that is worthwhile and beneficial, but it's not the measuring up to it necessarily that should be our primary interest. Rather, we should be looking inward and trying to build up a personality, a sense of self that's able to respond to any given situation and, and see it not as an ill fate, but as an opportunity. And I know that's cliche to see your problems as opportunities. But I mean, if it's purely a matter of perspective, which one is more conducive to personal growth, to well-being, to social change? I, I, even if we admit that free will is an illusion, is there not merit? Is there not a sense of play in involving oneself in the day-to-day -day existence of adult existence? of being human. Now there is a certain banality to, you know, the day in, day out kind of approach to life. It does get tedious and tiresome. But when you put a little work in, a lot may come out of it. The consistency is so huge and it's, it's difficult to see that until after the fact. Uh, oftentimes, things only become clear in hindsight, and we can only dream of having the foresight to know what we should do now, so that when we, looking back at ourselves from the future, are grateful for the work that we did put in, are grateful to the challenging decisions that were made, and helped turn things out a certain way, rather than I don't know, rolling over or, or hiding or just avoiding uh, whatever it is that is required of us to confront our fears, our doubts, our shame. It's not easy. It's very uncomfortable. And yet it's so rewarding. It's the quickest way to substantial character growth yet is also the most agonizing, the most painful, the most uncertain sometimes. 
But again, it's in that confrontation between what it is that we're trying to solve, what we're trying to resolve. There's not a battle, a, a war being fought per se, as much as a negotiation, a contest of ideas, of feelings, of emotions that each have their own merit. They're all valid um, in a certain light uh, in, in that they're pieces, perceptions broken off and, and transformed into some utility, into, into something that we can call as our own. But these are all parts of ourselves. Every, everything that is within our field of awareness is us to some extent. They're, they're, the distinction between self and other, between self and other, is a myth. In the most fundamental way. I mean, it's, it's very real. There's truly demonstrable processes that help us navigate this world, that uh, create these assemblages of identities which we kind of organize into a systemic coherence, and we call that me, the I, the self. And yet, this isn't a permanent self. This is a temporary subject to change. And that's a good thing. Change is welcome. Change is necessary. Change is inevitable. But it's also scary. And we can only take so much of it at once before we feel like we're losing ourselves a bit. Any destruction to the world, our world, is, is likewise a destruction to ourself. And any destruction of ourself is a destruction of the world. These things are very connected, and it's the confrontation between self and other in which we may find a uh, deep resonance with what it means to be alive, to be awake. Uh, and I speak not from a place of authority, but simply asking questions and inquiring into these topics, subjects, disciplines that I find interesting. I find these worthwhile to consider and question and talk about. And that's what my goal was with this video. I know some of it may have come across as gibberish or incoherent or probably not fleshed out well enough, uh, but uh, if you made it this far, let me know what you think. Um, my goal was just to share a thought, and I'm very new to this YouTube space. I'm still figuring it out. I'm trying to upload more frequently uh, because that's what the algorithm likes uh, to get noticed. I am working on a larger project in the background that's more uh, sophisticated and complicated, really, than these just uh, simple... Uh, cinema verite, uh, if you if you want to get technical with it, I guess, uh, that these talking head like rambles on, on, on my YouTube channel. Um, so I don't know, if you're still here, let me know what you think. Uh, you can hang out in the comments section. Um, and yeah, uh, stay hydrated and keep breathing.